Okay, so let's talk about three simple steps that can improve your releasing dramatically and go a little deeper into those steps. I alluded to them a couple videos ago in my video on consciousness and raising your consciousness. So if you haven't checked that video out, I'll put a link somewhere in here. But in the meantime, let's dive in deeper now. Now, before I get started, I want to invite you to like, subscribe, and share, and definitely comment in this video if you find it valuable, you find something you want to talk about. I love the discussions. I want to get those discussions going. It really helps everybody to learn. So let's dive in. So what are those three simple steps? Well, those three simple steps are the process that leads to really good releasing. And I personally think the first step is the one that everybody really screws up. And the last step isn't that hard once you get the first two right, but everybody just doesn't think to do it. So we really got to understand step one and step three, but everybody's always trying to do step two. So what is it? Step one, let's dive right in. Okay. Step number one is you got to get, and this is especially with the difficult stuff, the stuff that you just really have a hard time letting go of, you're stuck on, you don't know what to do. You don't know what to, how to work with it. You don't know what to do with it. Is you got to get comfortable being with it. You got to get comfortable looking at it. You got to get comfortable sitting with it. Most people just want to release. They have so much want to release that they're, they literally look at the thing they're going to release or let go of the emotion they don't want to feel just so they can let it go. But that is a fundamental mistake. It's a flaw. And then there's another big group of us that look at the thing we want to release and we get distracted really quickly because it hurts so much. We're like uh, within seconds, oh, let me check the text really quick. Let me go check YouTube. Let me go uh, call my friend. I forgot to call him because we really don't want to be with the thing we're looking at. And then there's a third reason. We go to look at it and it's just elusive. Like you can barely feel it. It's so repressed deep into the subconscious mind. It's like, I don't feel anything. When it comes to approaching women, I don't have any fear. I don't feel anything. But when I go to approach them, I can't do it. But I don't really feel anything. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. And if some of you can relate to that last one, definitely put a comment in the video. I want to hear. I want everybody else to see how many people have that problem because it's kind of weird. I don't feel anything, but I just can't do it. And I've heard that comment so many times over the years. All three of these are the same problem. It's this fundamental resistance to being with what is there even the last one to some weird degree. And we're going to talk about that. So when I look at what's there, if I want to distract and I can only handle it for a few minutes, then what I'll do, and this is a very simple process. Matter of fact, for all three of these, I'll do this. If it's really deep and I can't just look at it and let it go. The easy stuff you can just look at, let it go. That's not what I'm talking about this video. I'm talking about the more difficult stuff. I'll write it down. I'll journal in a journal. I always have a journal like this. Matter of fact, I have more than one right here. And I'll write down fear. Or I'll write down fear of talking to women or resistance to talking to women. Or I don't even know why I don't want to talk to women, but I'll feel a little bind in my body. And I just sit with it for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And then my mind will want to distract. And if it's really intense, I always let my mind distract. I don't want my mind to become so hyper-focused on what I wrote down that it becomes obsessed with it. Like, I got to fix this now. So I focus. I feel the intensity. I feel that desire to distract. I feel the anxiousness. I feel the nervousness. And then I look away. And then I open back up and relax for a minute. I listen to some music. And then I come back and do it again. I might go in four or five minute increments where I work on something look at it, let go, look at it, let go. And then I'll just stop for two or three minutes and distract myself. And then I come back and work again. And I'll do this over and over again for days on end. I'll do this for maybe a week straight with really difficult things. And I will not, this is a key, look for results. I will not every day go, is it getting better? Is it releasing? Am I getting more comfortable with it? I won't look for a minimum of a week because you'll know when you're getting results. A week later, three days in, four days in, suddenly you'll just feel different when you go to write it down. Now, I said that kind of fast. So to illustrate it a little deeper, what I do is I write down exactly what I'm feeling. Anger at women, judgment. I see a story coming up and I sit with the anxiety, the fear, the doubt, the worry, and the desire to distract. And I sit in with it as long as I can, 30 seconds, a minute, and then when it gets to be too much, I just relax for a little bit, open up, put the book away and relax for 30 seconds a minute. Then I come back and do it again. 
Then I distract for 30 seconds a minute. Then I come back and do it again. If it gets really overwhelming and I feel myself getting really bound up, then I'll distract for four or five minutes and then come back and do it again. And I do that cycle every day, 20 minutes at a time, let's say 30 minutes for a minimum of a week without looking for results. What you'll find is that after that week's over, you'll look back and you'll be able to look at it so much more easily. It'll get so much more easy to look at if you just take your time with it and relax into it. That first process where you really have something coming up that you're trying to release and you're writing it down is pretty easy to see. Like you can feel the anxiety coming up. You can feel the desire to look away. But what about the last thing I talked about? That part of you that doesn't really feel anything. What do you write there? What do you do there? Well, you welcome the 1% that's there. You journal about it. Like I barely, like I'm looking at women and I can't feel anything. It's driving me nuts. I look at women and I think about approaching them and I feel the resistance to approach, but I can't even explain the feeling. And I'll just sit with that. I'll look at the women. I'll look at what I wrote. Look at the women. Look at what I wrote to see if I can get any of that anxiety to build, any of that fear to build. And if it does, great. I'm getting in touch with it. If it doesn't, I just do that for the day. And again, occasionally I'll look away. I'll look back. I might do that for 20, 30 minutes a day. And at the end of the week, I'll look back and see if I've grown. I won't be looking for growth that week. But what happens a lot of times is the thing that you are most afraid to feel is so repressed under the surface that it takes like chipping away a little bit each day before it comes up. Three, four days in, five days in, you really begin to feel it. And then you go through and you can start to release all that feeling that's come up or or get in touch with it. Welcome, not release. Welcome all that feeling. That's step number one is getting in touch with the feeling, getting comfortable with it over a week, sometimes over a month if it's really intense and not looking back for a month, just like a workout. I'm not going to change my workout routine in four weeks or six weeks. I'm not even going to look for results. And then in four to six weeks, I'll reweigh myself, redo my body fat, do everything and see how much I've grown. Step number two, let's dive into step number two. Step number two is the easy part. Once you really can look at it, you can really be with it. You can stare right at it. You can start to release some of it. You can be like, okay, can I let some of this go? Can I just be with some of this? Can I open my heart and let more of it go? Yeah. And you might start finding that some of it you move right to a joy, but a lot of it you're going to move to maybe a neutrality. Can I get neutral with it? Can I just get comfortable with it? Can I just be happy even if I can't fully approach yet? Can I just let go more of the anxiety? Maybe I feel like there's a little urge to approach now or a little urge to talk to women or go on dates, but it's not strong yet, but I'm comfortable with it now. I can look right at it. I can see it for what it is. That's step number two. That's the easy one. That's releasing in a nutshell. And if you don't have David Hawkins letting go or my revealing course, letting go course, definitely check out my letting go course. It's powerful. We'll put a link somewhere in this video. Now, step number three. This is the other one everybody misses. When you get to a point where you're comfortable looking at it, you're moving in the right direction, can you get up to peace, love, and joy with it? Can you really come to a point where you can just totally blast your heart wide open and laugh and be happy and peaceful with the idea that you can not approach women, that you can't talk to women, that you're bad at dates? Because what'll happen is the moment you get up into cap with it, courage, acceptance, love, and peace, and courage is the, always the goal, no matter what level you're at. It's the courage to look at it in that, that first step, the courage to let go in the second step, and then the courage to, to let go to the point you have love for it in the third step. When you can get to that stage, then the answers will show themselves. As soon as you're like, yeah, I'm okay with not approaching. I'm confident I can, I can fuck, who cares? It's just fucking life, right? It's beautiful, but wait, here's an idea, here's an idea, here's an idea, and suddenly you're meeting women. Suddenly you're like, wait a minute, I do have a little desire to go talk to her. Because the at that point of total peace inside, something shifts. When you don't care anymore, one way or another, the answers always show themselves. Or maybe a, the perfect woman just walks right into your life, if that's what you're looking for, and shows right up. And you're like, wow, it's almost like magic. And I can't tell you how many people have experienced that with a good release when they really get released on something, whether it's money, women, health, doesn't matter. Actually, if you've experienced that, I'd love to see a comment about it in the video about your experience with doing some releasing or letting go and then having a magic moment like that where everything just changed and you're like, wow, or the right person showed up or the right situation showed up or the money showed up. 
because I know there's tons of them out there. So definitely put a comment in the video. And it's in that third stage, it's in your ability to look back at these old painful traumas with love that gives you so much wisdom and freedom in the future to be able to create exactly what you want and to help others do the same. Because once you get that wisdom, once you have that wisdom, it's amazing how it translates to so many areas of your life. And how when you've truly gotten it, you want to share it. You want to share it with other people. You want to help other people get out of that same trap. So that's really all I've got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Definitely put a comment in the video if you haven't already. Let's get that conversation started. I really want to hear what you have to say and help each other grow. And um, with that said, remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.